Right, here's something I bet we don't do um, as often as we should. I've just read the instructions on this uh, Pal Star, and it suggests that uh, you clean it, uh, take the lid off and clean the coil and uh, the capacitors every six months. Um, do you know what? I don't think I've ever done it since I've had it. So I guess it's time we clean it. Okay. Let's get it nicely in the picture. Ta da! Oh, it's complete. Well, that is lovely. I suppose this might be a good opportunity to stop the video and explain what an what a ATU is. Despite its name, it doesn't actually tune the antenna what it does is it fools the radio into thinking that the antenna is the right size for the frequency that you're using and this one is complete with the uh, the four to one ballon so i can put ladder line directly on it without any additional requirements it's really nicely wound Really is really, really wonderful. So it's really just a quick case of running a, a cloth over that uh, roller inductor uh, just to get the, the, the charring off. I don't know if that's charring or just grease, to be honest. Um, but it looks in perfect condition to me. Quick bl uh, brush to get some dust off. Quick wipe with a cloth to get the uh, the grease off of that, if that's what it is. Some black marks. And um, put the lid back on. If you've just got a single wire, this is where you would connect it. You take this bridge out and you connect the single wire to here. And that's a long wire antenna. And that would just run, you know, um, 40 or 50 meters long uh, down, the, down the length of your uh, property. If you've got a long enough garden or yard. Um, you then short that out against this one. So these two become the balanced line. Okay, so this is where you'd put your ladder line with the uh, ladder line across these two. Okay, like so. That is coax number two, and that's coax number one. Okay, and that is the, uh, the input from your transceiver or amplifier. The bottom one is a is a bypass and the idea of that is you could you'd put a, um, a dummy load on it or or um, something similar so there's your choices you've got um, two coax feeds uh, which also um, <laughs> if the other thing as well if you wanted to you could have free aerial uh, wires on this um, and you could turn each of them into a switch but that the bypass uh, doesn't go via the tuner the um the first two antenna inputs go via the tuner uh, on the selector switch on the front and the bypass uh, doesn't it doesn't have the the tunability come round to the front panel on the um the power star and uh, what you see here is the the roller inductor 
and then the, the two capacitor banks for the input and the input, um, and the selector switch. Now, that's the bypass, the bottom um, connector on the back for the coax. Uh, and in that position, the input goes directly to it without going via any of the circuitry inside. It's literally a bypass. Coax one, coax two, these are direct, so there's no tuning. And then that would then tune um, the coax one input, coax two input, and the balance line input, or the, the long wire, depending on uh, what you've got uh, set up on the back, okay? Now, there's two schools of thought uh, with um, these type of uh, ATUs. And that is that uh, you you set the capacitors for fully unmeshed and zero is fully unmeshed. And then you would turn the inductor for maximum noise and then tune. Um, the other school of thought is to turn both the um, capacitors to half mesh, which is uh, 50 on these, okay. And then do the same process where you then turn the inductor for maximum noise um, and then tune for final SWR. Um, I found from, from playing with this that the best way of doing it is having them half uh, meshed um, and by far better results. So here we are, okay. Um, the capacitors are uh, just moved up a little bit. I normally set mine to around 50, but I just give them a little bit of capacitance. So slightly meshed. And now what I'm going to do is turn the inductor for maximum noise. Now, it's not necessarily audio uh, here, but we're just going to see if we can get the scope to be a little bit more noisy. So we'll just turn the inductor until we start getting a bit more background noise and you can see now it's beginning to get a bit brighter. There you go, nice and bright. And if we go further than the uh, that, it starts getting dark again. So we'll just roll it back. to about 180, nice and bright on the scope. And now we just need to see where we are for SWR. So we're in CW at the moment. I'll just take it somewhere um, where there's no one on the band, about there. And um, we're on very low wattage. We'll just hit the key button and you can see we're 1.5. So that's not bad. Um, so we can now switch across to this meter. And what we need to do is, oh, we go above it. Look, so, oh, there you go, 1.5. I don't think we're going to get any better than that, to be honest with you. Bingo. Nope. Here we go. So we are there. So, no movement, we can make it, so we're putting out 11 watts and we have no SWR. The inductor is reading 180 and we're on a capacitance of output 20, input 22, 23 and an SWR of nothing. Yeah, okay, Brian, QSL, uh, I'm North London, hey, Dad's called.